love a good outfit formula and outfit repeating and sticking to a really core aesthetic, but I also believe that style and fashion is fun. And sometimes if we are too rigid in how we dress, we kind of lose the fun of getting dressed and exploring and evolving in our personal style. And I think that's when we can feel like we're in a style rut and that makes us maybe want to shop for things that we don't really need. I think instead, maybe we just need a little injection of risk, a little bit of creativity in our closets. So today I want to share three style risks that I think everyone can take, especially using what you've already got in your closet. Before we jump in, I just want to go over quickly why taking fashion risks every now and then can be a good thing. Number one is that it helps to get you out of your comfort zone and you Usually when you nail it, it feels really good. And I think this is just a great sort of life reminder that sometimes we have to take a little bit of a risk. Sometimes we have to exit our comfort zone in order to gain some benefits and learn something new and grow. Another reason to take fashion risks is because it flexes your creativity muscle. And I believe there is nothing better than creativity to help you shop your closet more and get more use out of what you already have. Style risks also help us discover ourselves and who we are and how we like to personally express ourselves. It is a form of identity, right? So I really think it's important that we explore and that we test things out. That way we can really get an understanding of what works on us and why. And we just become so much more comfortable in what we wear and in expressing our individuality without being intimidated. Taking style and fashion risks can be a little bit scary, but there's a couple things that I would love for you to keep in mind as you do this. Number one, it's just fashion. It should be fun. Even if you make a mistake, that's okay. It's part of life. It's part of getting dressed. It's not the end of the world. If you don't want to make a mistake, however, or if you are feeling a little bit of trepidation going out in the world wearing something new, I can recommend two things. Number one, take a photo of yourself with this more like risky or, you know, with your pilot outfit. See how you like yourself in photos, take it from every angle. Do remember though that I personally think more riskier outfits, sometimes they don't photograph as well. Sometimes there are outfits and combinations that just don't translate well on camera. So if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you are loving it and you are feeling it, then I say go for it, okay? My second tip is to balance it out with your go-tos. If you're taking a little bit of a risk, make sure that is the only, you know, risk risky element in your outfit. Only do it with one element and everything else, make sure it is garments or styling techniques or whatever that you are super comfortable with. That way you still feel like yourself. Those are my tips. Now let's get into some of the style risks. The first style risk that I always consider is showing a little bit more skin. Now this doesn't mean dressing in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, but I think there are ways that you can show a little bit of skin and still feel modest and have an outfit that is full of class. I just think that we often overlook how big an impact raising a cuff or unbuttoning an extra button can make in an outfit. And of course, how you show a little bit more skin is going to be entirely dependent on you and what you like and your comfort level. Some tips to show a little bit more skin and not feel super déclassé is to balance out any extra skin that you're showing with either a off the body silhouette. So something that is maybe oversized or relaxed. So nothing that is too, too tight. Cause I think then there are too many elements that feel like more nighttime appropriate, if you know what I mean. So if I'm showing a little bit more skin, I will often do this with something like an oversized button up or baggier pants. Like if I'm showing my midriff, I'll make sure I'm doing it with like a voluminous pant and maybe a tighter shirt on top. 
top so that there's a nice juxtaposition and that I don't feel like I'm trying too hard. Something else that you can do is if you like a tighter silhouette and also want to show a bit of skin, then I would just make sure you've got really good coverage. So if you're showing a lower neckline, for example, with a tighter fitted top, I would just make sure that the tighter fitted top is long sleeve, it's covered, there's no midriff showing. You're really only using like that one sort of show of skin as the focal point and that's it. So that way it's balanced out with modesty everywhere else. Another way that you can show skin in kind of a fun and playful manner is by using your lingerie for day. I've done an entire video about this. I will leave it up here for you. And yes, a lot of those looks are fully wearable for daytime. The easiest way to wear lingerie during the daytime I find is by adhering to those principles of either coverage or a relaxed or oversized fit, but also to make sure that the lingerie is also understated. I wouldn't go wearing like bright colors or anything like that if you want to show off your lingerie. It could be like an off the shoulder sweater where we see a little bit of the bra strap, but I would make sure that your lingerie is neutral and fits really seamlessly with the rest of your outfit in terms of color. Like it just kind of fades into the background. It's not about bringing attention to the lingerie. It's really just about keeping it like settled and understated and a little bit of like, oh, that's interesting. That's unexpected. If you know what I mean. My final tip for showing some skin is about hemlines and slits. So something else that you can do that is really easy is just like try wearing a skirt backwards or try adding a slit into a skirt or a dress. I'm not talking about something super thigh high. I'm just talking about like something that flashes a little bit of skin when you walk or when you cross your legs. And the beauty of adding a slit to a skirt or a dress is that you can have your seamstress or tailor do it to a height that is perfectly comfortable for you. If you're doing this, I would test it out when you are there, sit down, see how high you want the slit to go. Not only does this add a little bit of like edge and interest to your skirts and dresses, but it's also a lot easier to walk in and move. And when it comes to hemlines, I often find that sometimes proportions are off because our skirts and dresses are just too long and hitting us at the wrong place. Often an inch or two above the knee is a really flattering length for most people. So if you're feeling like your proportions are off or if you're feeling like some of your skirts or dresses are tired, considering getting them hemmed and see what that looks like for you. My next fashion risk is most likely not new if you've been around for a while, but I'm talking about using unexpected color combinations or mixing prints. Mixing prints can be really fun. To make it less intimidating is by making sure that there is one common denominator color between your two prints. Typically, I like to use a neutral for this because it's like the most subtle, especially if you're new to mixing prints, this is really key. The other thing that you can do is to make sure that the scale of your prints is different. So I wouldn't pair two prints of a similar scale together. This can look really busy for the eye. Even though mixing prints is a very bold look and it is a lot for the eye to take in, you still want it to tell a bit of a story. This could look like a smaller polka dot with a huge polka dot or a floral with a stripe or a polka dot with a stripe. I talk about unexpected color combinations being really cool because we often tend to look at our bold colors that are in our closet. What I find happens more often than not with my styling clients is we either wear them only one way or we only wear them with one neutral. Usually this is black. So I would encourage you to try using color in an unexpected way. A couple of ways that you can do this is number one, by pairing it with a non-black neutral. So in the winter, pair your fun and interesting colors with more subtle neutrals like navy, charcoal gray, browns. And then in the summer, try pairing your colors with navy is always a good one. It's like a universal seasonless color, light gray, tan, acru, white. These are all really beautiful color combinations that are less expected than when we pair them with our traditional black or jeans or something like that. Other unexpected color combinations are analogous colors and this can be like a orange and red for example or pink and red or blue and green it's often 
not the first thing we think of. When we think of pairing our colors together, we often think of doing like complementary colors, like for example, blue and orange. But if you try pairing colors that are close together on the color wheel, it still comes off as really thoughtful and considered. The way to make this work and not too busy, however, is to make sure that everything else in the look is neutral. If you are really, really afraid of color, then I would encourage you to just try having one colorful accent in your outfit. This could be a purse or a shoe if you're just getting started, or maybe it's a really colorful scarf, or you could color block only with your accessories. So this could look like having a bright colored shoe with a bright colored bag in completely different parts of the color wheel. So that's where you can have some really cool like complementary color combos there as well. If you've been around for a while, you've heard this tip before, but that is to mix two completely different styles together. I love doing this. I think it creates some of the most interesting outfits. If you've got your three words down, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about, you know, your three words, they're just three key style descriptors. I'll leave a video for you up here if you're not sure what I'm talking about. A really fun thing to do is to take two different styles and try pairing them together. The easiest way to do this without coming across as looking like totally style confused is to try the two by two formula, and that's to have two pieces from one style and two pieces from another. For example, if you like to pair polished pieces with casual pieces, make sure your outfit is two pieces casual and two pieces more polished. Polished pieces could be trousers and a blazer, and then the casual pieces could be, you know, a really slouchy sort of fanny pack purse and a t-shirt underneath. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you, thank you so much for watching and for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you in the next slow fashion video. Ciao!